Hey guys, and welcome back to another Andor Breakdown. Tonight we're going to cover episode 5, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who joined the watch party last night. I had a lot of fun as always, and I'll be seeing you guys next week for episode 6. Now, first and foremost, I'll give my brief thoughts. I thought the episode had a lot of exposition, a lot of unnecessary exposition. I do feel that the story is building nicely, and eventually some big things will happen, of course, seeing as how episode six will probably have the end of the heist, or perhaps that could be into episode seven. But if that's the case, there's still another four or five episodes left, meaning there's a lot more that can happen and go on in the show. I just hope that they cut out a lot of the unnecessary stuff that we don't really need and just really get to the point in a much more movie style fashion versus TV style, which drags things out a lot episode by episode. But then again, this is a TV show. So anyways, let's begin with the breakdown. So this episode starts off with Cyril at home and he's emotionally very devastated for his failure and for losing his job. He feels responsible for the Empire getting involved with Prima organization and for going against his boss's orders. He's sitting with his mother and having a bowl of space cereal with blue milk. Now, Blue Milk, of course, for those new to Star Wars, was first seen in A New Hope on the Lars homestead with Luke Skywalker and Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen. Now, some of the life advice being given here is actually really beneficial and really good. Not just to Cyril, but for us too as the viewer. Now, Cyril's mom is going to call Uncle Harlow calling in for a big family favor. And Cyril says, well, will he even remember you or will he even give you the time of day? And she says, yeah, of course, and he'll be happy to do it. So who is this Uncle Harlow? Does he work in the Empire? Maybe. Is he high up? Possibly. Could he give Cyril his job back or a job with the Empire? It is possible. But maybe he is a bounty hunter. Maybe he does some other job that Cyril will find interesting. Or maybe it's just some low-level job that Cyril really wants nothing to do with. Now, I think Cyril's information of Cassian and the hologram that he has with him, which was ratted to him by Cassian's buddy, Tim, will eventually be used against Cassian, of course. Cassian wakes up on Aldani with the crew as they near the heist to take money from the Empire's military base. He chats with Skeen, and this is one of the guys at the camp who took all of Cassian's blasters to check them out. It's very evident that Skeen does not trust or like Cassian, and I think actually that they're going to become good friends going on, and probably Skeen's going to die or something like that. Now, Skeen points to one of the blasters and says this is corporate issue. So right off the bat, we can tell that the tensions are high between these two and he just really doesn't trust Cassian at all as he's always putting Cassian in the hot seat and questioning and interrogating him. So this episode really helped establish much more about the dynamic between the people in the heist and the crew and the fact that they don't really trust each other much. Skeen shows Cassian his different tattoos to show that he's been a prisoner of different worlds, different planets. And Cassian responds with having been in juvie basically as a kid himself when he was 13. Mon Mothma has breakfast on Coruscant with her husband and her daughter, Lita. There's some family drama here and it's evident that both Mon Mothma's husband and daughter don't really like her all that much. I think this is to show that Mon Mothma is singled out, that she's human, and she's being bullied or ganged up on. I think this makes her sort of the victim in the story, and it'll help with her story of being a fighter, a lone wolf, going against all odds type of thing, without much support at all from those that are very close to her. I think her and her husband have very different political ideologies. Cassian checks out an old school interceptor for star systems. He then gives gives valuable information about the heist in regards to the weight of the ship, which the crew was about to completely oversight on and make a very grave mistake, which would have resulted in their capture or their demise. So clearly, Cassian knows more about these ships and vehicles than the crew. He's a valuable asset, and there's much more to him than they think. He knows more, but more importantly, how does he know this much? Tamarin runs Cassian through some drills to make him walk and move like an Imperial soldier, and we saw how detail-oriented and observant Cassian is as he notices things about the heist members, like which hand's their dominant hand, and knowing proper military procedures, like the firing arm should be on the outside of the lineup. As a TIE fighter flies over them, almost hitting them, they cover the blasters, which they refer to as guns, and I thought that was really weird. It kind of took me out of it. That's really the first time in Star Wars, I believe. But maybe these are guns. Maybe these aren't blasters. But again, this has not happened in Star Wars before. So 
so possible slight oversight or maybe it'll be explained later. We jump a couple scenes and Andor gets dressed and puts Luthen's ricotta kyber crystal around his neck and hides it in his chest. Now if you want to learn about the ricotta, I made a video just a few days ago covering the ricotta empire, the infinite empire, and their complete history. So go check that out if you so wish. They're a really cool species and they got a really cool history as well. Deidre continues to research the case that she was ordered not to continue regarding the NS9 Starpath unit that Cassian took. Now I believe that unit has something to do with being a navigation unit or navigation system that was probably going to go in some big imperial ship, maybe even an imperial star destroyer. She's convinced that all of the mishappenings around the galaxy aren't random, but actually are purposely meant to look random, which makes them of course rigged. She's going to crack the case and she will probably get to the bottom of this eventually with her coworker. The crew gets ready for the heist, and this is the last night before they get on the move. Cyril and his mother continue to talk, and at this point the cereal is mushy for the length that they've been chatting, or at least it's edited that way because like several days have passed and they're still sitting there chatting away. Cassian, or by his alias Clem, goes over routines with Vel. We learn that Lieutenant Gorn lost the woman he loved and lost a promotion with the Empire. I'm assuming perhaps the two might have been related or something as it made him fall out of passion with his job and for working for the Empire, thus turning him into a spy and helping Cassian and the crew. Skeen takes a knife to Cassian's throat and rips off the kyber crystal that Luthen gave him. Skeen finally cracked and doesn't believe Cassian is legit. He's wondering why Cassian brought treasure with so much with him on a heist. So Cassian does the unthinkable and tells the crew that he's a pay for hire. He's just there to get the job done and get paid. The crew get mad at Vel for not telling them, but they eventually get over it. Mon Mothma and her husband head home in their car on Coruscant with their driver. So I guess they had the dinner that was mentioned in the previous episode in episode 4 that would have had Sly Moore and a whole bunch of other politicians there as well. Now I was really excited for this because Sly Moore was very very close to Palpatine during the prequels and there's a very big backstory on Sly Moore which I'll be uploading a video on her very soon in a couple days here and I want you guys to check it out because there's a lot of really interesting lore behind her and her connection to Palpatine is rather quite deep and in Legends they even had a kid well sort of so if we do see her in the show, the fact that she was mentioned is promising, it is cool. Maybe we'll see her in the Senate as we did see the Senate in the trailer, with the same one that we saw in Revenge of the Sith and of course the rest of the prequels. So there is a good chance that we'll see her near the end of the season, maybe next to Palpatine himself. Anyways, Mon Mothma and her husband go over the dinner conversation and her husband, Garen, sees something wrong with her. He says, you saw me talking to Gar to feed tonight. Now, I don't know who that Gar Tafid guy is. I don't really think it's important. He's a new character in the show, I believe. Garen asks to learn about this new foundation Mothma has been hiding from him until tonight. She says you wouldn't be interested because it's about charity. So clearly that's a jab and these two aren't very similar. We get the idea. Their interests or ideologies politically are completely different as well. And Garen seems to lean on the opposite political spectrum as his wife. The crew arrive at the Imperial military base and set up camp as Cyril sits on his bed and watches the revolving hologram of Cassian Andor that Tim leaks to him. He seems committed to finding him and bringing him to jail. Maybe he thinks that if he does this he'll gain favor again or he'll get his job back or maybe he'll get a job with the Empire and his title along with it. Skeen tells Cassian about his brother. So he's starting to open up to Cassian now and says this is sort of a form of apology from him. Now, Skeen's brother, long story short, was killed by the Empire. Basically, how he had his farm flooded, a farm of pepper trees, centuries of them, and destroyed by an Imperial, where he ended up taking his own life, sadly. So Skeen definitely has it out for the Empire now for what they did to his brother, and not to mention he didn't like them very much in the first place anyways. Luthen has second thoughts on hiring Andor, and thinks maybe it was a bad move, maybe it's going to fail him, maybe he made a big mistake. We see the Jedi and Sith holocrons behind him, and God knows what the heck is inside of them, what kind of information. It'd be pretty cool to find out. Luthen's co-worker walks over, and he tells her to double-check her walk-away bag, so clearly he thinks things will go wrong and that they'll need to be on the run. 
She says it'll all be over this time tomorrow, and Luthen says, or will it just be starting? I thought this line was really cool. This is in reference to the rebellion. This could be the very first big move people make against the Empire. And word could get out, which could be the exact story people need, that this is possible. It is indeed a possibility to win against them if they work together. If we work together. And so I believe that this is really the start of the rebellion in its entirety. So far, the show is up and down. I do enjoy the show. I, th- I know it has a slower tone and I don't necessarily mind that. However, I would love if they would speed up some of the scenes and just take us a little bit more into some action as now we're entering the sixth episode and really not all that much has happened. But hey, let's see where the show goes. It's building a lot of the dynamic with a lot of different characters. And we have a lot of different stories that we're running through in this show. Cassian, Mon Mothma, Luthen, the Imperials, Daedra. So there's a lot being built and I understand that takes time. So going forwards, let's see what happens. And I can't wait to see you all in next week's watch party. Let me know what you think about the episode going forwards, what we would have loved to have seen this episode and what you would love to see in the next week's episode as well. What do you hope to get out of this show? Leave a like on this breakdown if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for your support, everyone. I love you all, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always. Mm-hmm.